Okay, this is a video on some of the smaller topics that we need to cover to make sure we get caught up for um, next week's classes. So this section is over midpoints and perpendicular bisectors. Um, so we need to make sure we know the definitions and the formula and then I'll do an example or two of each. So we can find the midpoint, which is the center of a line segment by using the following formula. This formula does need to be memorized. It's a pretty simple basic formula, but we want to make sure that you know it. To find the midpoint, you take the two ordered pairs, you add their x's together, and then you average it, which means you cut it in half, and then you add the y's together and you cut that in half. So in other words, you just take an average of the x's and an average of the y's. So that is what these blanks would say. So average of the x-coordinates to find the x-coordinate of the midpoint and the average of the y-coordinates to find the midpoint y-value. So for example, if I have two ordered pairs, let's say 2, 5, and negative 4, 3. Oops, sorry about that. Sometimes this thing likes to jump. To use the midpoint formula, I would add the x's together. So my midpoint, which we usually call a capital M, is 2 plus negative 4. And then we're going to cut that in half. And then 5 plus 3 for the y's, and we're going to cut that in half. So the midpoint is negative 2 over 2 and 8 over 2. And then we just see if we can reduce these. So the midpoint would actually be negative 1 comma 4 for this example right here. So just to kind of show you how the formula works, it's pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, why we need to know this one is because of an application to lines. So when we talk about lines uh, and perpendicular lines, there's a special type of perpendicular line that happens when you cross a segment at a very specific point, and that specific point is the midpoint, and that creates what is called the perpendicular bisector. So the perpendicular bisector is a line that divides a line segment into equal parts, two different equal parts, and it creates a right angle with the line segment. Each point on the perpendicular bisector, so I'm going to abbreviate that this time, is the same distance from each of the endpoints of the original line segment. So there's a picture of what this looks like down here. Here's a segment. This is the midpoint right here. So that's M, and this is a perpendicular line, we just call it L just to give it a name, that not only hits this at 90 degrees, but it cuts this segment in half. So there's some steps if we want to find a perpendicular bisector. So to find a perpendicular bisector of a segment with endpoints A and B, so we have to know what the order, uh, ordered pairs are, we need to first find the middle of those two ordered pairs, then we will find the slope of this line, the reason we need the slope of this line right here is because this is perpendicular to it. So if we know the slope of the original line, we know how to find a perpendicular slope, and that is step three. And then step four is use point slope formula with your new slope and midpoint to find the equation. So I'm going to create an example of this. So my directions will say um, find an equation. of a perpendicular bisector to a line segment AB when A is let's say negative 3 comma 5 and B is negative 1 negative 7 okay so the notice that the only thing they gave us was two ordered pairs of the original segment so the first thing we need to do is we need to find the midpoint or capital M of this segment they gave us. So remember we add our x's together, 
cut it in half. We add our y's together. We're going to cut that in half. That is negative 4 over 2, comma, negative 2 over 2. That reduces down to negative 2, comma, negative 1. So we need this because this is going to be part of our final equation. And I think I'm going to have to um, probably go up to the top in a minute because I'm running out of room. Second, so this was step one. Step two, we're going to find the slope of the original segment because we're going to make something perpendicular to it. Remember, little m or lowercase m is for slope, and we do our slope formula. Now, this is where people get confused because the slope formula requires you to subtract. Remember, in the midpoint formula, you're adding things together. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that would be negative 7 minus 5 over negative 1 minus negative 3, so that's going to change to plus plus. That makes that negative 12 over 2, so that has a slope of negative 6. Step 3 is we want a perpendicular slope to that. Remember, that's my symbol for perpendicular. So for that, we actually have to flip this fraction and change its sign, so that makes it positive 1 sixth. This is the other piece of information that we need. So now we have our point for our midpoint, which remember our perpendicular bisector goes through that, and we have our perpendicular slope. So for step four, you take your midpoint and you plug it into your point slope formula. Remember, point slope looks like this. y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So it'll be y minus negative 1 equals 1 over 6 parentheses x minus negative 2. We'll want to change change on those negatives, uh, double negatives right there. So y plus 1 equals 1 over 6 times x plus 2. Uh, I usually get rid of my fraction now, so I'm going to times both sides by 6. And to show you that, I'm doing it in red to emphasize that. So that's going to cancel out. Over here, we'll have to distribute 6y plus 6 times 1 is 6. We have to distribute the positive 1 left over to this, so that still gives me x plus 2. And I didn't specify what equation format to put this in, so let's just do slope intercept. That'll be easier. So we'll subtract 6 over. So we get 6y equals x minus 4, and then I'll divide everything by 6. So my final answer on this example, um, I'll write it over here since I'm running out of room. Sorry about that. It's y equals, so we have a 1 over a 6, so 1 sixth x, and 4 divided by 6, uh, those are both even, so we can divide both of them by 2, and it's negative 2 over 3. So that would be my perpendicular bisector equation. So this isn't much different than what we did when we did perpendicular lines in class. The big difference is because of the word bisector, this is what the big key is here, we needed to know the midpoint. That's what that tells you to do. And this tells you you need a slope, then you make a perpendicular slope, which remember we know means flip and change uh, the sign. So that's really why I knew to do steps one, two, and three. It's because of these two words. So that is the end of these two examples. Essentially, this was just a feeder to kind of tie in something from geometry and college algebra with what we were reviewing in class with perpendicular lines.